you're watching MPS Connections with AJ Hoffman. Welcome to MPS Connections. I'm your host, AJ Hoffman. I have the pleasure of being joined today by three social emotional learning specialists here in the district. Uh, their names are Zoe Ferguson. Zoe, say hello. Hello. What school are you usually stationed at? I am at Adams Elementary full time. All right, thank you. And Karen Muma. Hello. Karen, where are you at? I am at Midland High. Okay, and you're kind of working with our, our secondary students, correct? correct? Okay, cool. And Debbie Winstone. Debbie, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah. What, what school are you at? I am based at Chestnut Hill Elementary. Okay, awesome. All right, well, thank you all for, for joining me today. So let's start off with the basics. What, what is social-emotional learning? Who, who feels like they can, they can answer that most comprehensively? Well, I think one of the best ways to answer it would really be to use Castle's definition. Um, Castle is the collaborative for academic, social, emotional learning. Um, if it's okay with you, I'll go ahead and read that go one right just ahead. because it, it really covers the, the, um, the gamut. So social emotional learning is an integral part of education and human development. It's the process through which all young people and adults acquire and apply knowledge, skills, and attitudes to develop healthy identities, manage emotions, and achieve personal and collective goals. They feel and show empathy for others, others establish and maintain supportive relationships and make responsible and caring decisions. So it's kind of like there are five fundamental competencies. So self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and then responsible decision-making. So basic human skills that people need for social interaction in all walks of and life. that they'll need for the rest of their lives, right? Right, absolutely. Uh, so I, I think I already know the answer. What, what do, what students benefit from SEL? The student benefit from SEL, I think, is that really their, their life skills. Uh, SEL, you know, we talk about soft skills or those things that you use every day, but I like to call SEL skills the essential skills. I mean, it is learning to communicate and work through conflict and uh, do so with respect and kindness and just understand one another in a sense, but also understanding ourselves. So they are essential in that whether you're in school or you're in the workplace or you're with your family, these are skills that are going to be important to have and use. I, I love that you said that, Karen, because you uh, mentioned soft skills because I, I was reading an article that mentioned that exactly. Mm -hmm. In Inc. Magazine, they were talking about um, the most employable skills, the, the biggest employability skills, cognitive flexibility, negotiation skills, service orientation, judgment, decision-making, emotional intelligence, um, coordinating with others, people management, creativity, criti critical thinking, and complex problem solving. Those are ten top, the top ten most employable, or employability skills, top ten skills that are most, that employers are looking for the most, and they're all social, emotional, you know, related skills. Correct. Yeah, yeah, it's all connected. Yeah, it's all connected. I mean, you're going to need that at, well after school. The whole point of school is to get you a job eventually, right? Correct. So, yeah. Um, how are staff positively affected by SEL? You know, I think for the most part, because this is a tier one intervention in a sense, meaning that all are exposed to it, the, the staff not only understand you know their own self-awareness of their emotions and how they're impacted in the classroom and how they interact with other people i mean again this isn't just children this is adults and children and and everyone so what applies to the kids in the classroom also applies to the adults in the classroom and for them to understand when they are feeling stress and needing to take a break and then how can I do that and not only that I think it models to the students the real world I mean the adults in my life also have stress also need to stop and take a pause and for a staff member to be able to say that in front of a room of students uh, models a, a good choice a good behavior a good way to deal with conflict stress whatever it is mm -hmm. Yeah, I, we talked a little bit about it before we, we went on the air and how exactly SEL is implemented and you guys 
you guys kind of explained it much, much better. You don't really, you might work with some students directly, but for the most part, you guys work with the, the boots on the ground, the teachers. So kind of explain how that works a little bit. Any one of you, I mean. Sure, we're well, certainly at the elementary level. We've um, had a unique opportunity. We've been working with our educational consultant to help build resiliency skills in our teachers. And MPS has been able to embrace that and we have been offering professional learning to our elementary teachers and in addition to that we have kind of embraced the, um, the structure of how that model is implemented and we've been offering coaching to teachers and a new, fairly new idea is offering um, structured reflection to those adults as well to help them kind of process any emotional in, emotional or um, not necessarily mental health but just emotional struggles of the job right. and, and help them reflect and come up hopefully with their own solutions to how they can work through it but also being there in, the, in a um, a room full of people that would be supportive it'd be a small group but they'd be supportive of listening and helping them process and the goal with that is to help the teachers stop reaching the point of burnout where they feel overwhelmed yeah. and in addition to that we are also offering mindfulness classes where we walk in, we go into the classroom and we model for the teacher some mindfulness activities, some interventions that students can use to help, help regulate because I think as Karen was saying the adult SEL is just as important, in fact probably primary importance yeah. um, once the, the teachers are able to recognise when they need to take a break to self-regulate, then that, as Karen said, is a great way to model for the students how to do that. And once the students have that ability, they're able to manage those emotions and get along with their peers. Excellent. We'll get into to background on each of you in just a little bit, but I want to ask, how, how many specialists are there in the district? Do any of you know? Well, there are six at the elementary level, and I believe two, two at, the at the secondary. One in each high school. Oh, okay, good, good, good. All right. So Zoe, you were a teacher last year. What made you want to move or, uh, or focus on this method of learning? Yes, um, I had the opportunity to actually go through the MPS Resiliency Program last year as a teacher and had mindfulness brought into my classroom and I recognized the value in it. Um, it, was, it was huge and as an educator I was feeling burnt out, um, I, only in my fourth year. I was feeling physically, emotionally, mentally, my professional wellness just wasn't where I wanted or needed it to be. Um, and it just felt like increasing demands and responsibilities and not a whole lot of validation among colleagues and myself. So yeah. the lunchroom wasn't a great place to be a lot of days. And so when this position came along and I realized that I could possibly be that support for the adults in the building and create space, because like Debbie and Karen said, the adults also come in every day with their own stresses, their own emotions, their own relationships that they're managing, both personally and professionally. And we have to allow for that. And so that opportunity to recognize that and validate that, hey, like you're all human too. Yes, we all have a job to do, but you have to take care of you first. Right. And by doing that, we're able to provide the best education for our kiddos. So it, it was a neat opportunity for me to still support students while also supporting staff. That's awesome. I wonder how, I, I don't know too much about that, that resiliency program, but that's, that's an awesome resource to have yes. right here in the district. Um, all right, Debbie, you were our first SEL specialist. What's, what's your history with SEL and how did the district decide this was necessary? Um, well, my personal history, I've always had uh, uh, interest in SEL related activities, uh, being a social worker, they kind of go hands in hand, goes hand in hand with what we do and with our mental health um, elements. In terms of with MPS, um, when I first joined, I was given the opportunity to work alongside um, the educational consultant and deliver the MPS resiliency professional learning, and that was a great. Um, a great connection for me, it, it fed into my professional learning that I'd done on educational neuroscience, so that was a, a great fit for me. I really enjoyed that, and then after that first year, we had the opportunity to expand the program. Um, I think, to be honest, my, my recollection is that we got to the point 
that we needed to expand because we had just lived through a collective trauma. We'd had the pandemic, we'd had the Midland flood. We were having um, adults and students alike showing up dysregulated. Um, they were just under a lot of stress, emotional stress. And we know that stress brains can't learn. We know that stress brains can't teach very effectively. So it was an ideal opportunity to try and expand it. And I know we've reached out to the um, at the elementary level to the administrators to try and find out what they felt would be most beneficial. They had input on how can we best help our staff and students and that's where we decided that um, one of the good uses of the ESSA funds would be to develop these programs and enable us to have a social emotional learning specialist based in each elementary building and then some at the secondary level too. That's awesome. Thank you, Debbie. Now, Karen, what are some of the some of the positive things that are that we're implementing regarding SEL in our own district? I think first and, and foremost, there were several of us that went to a conference uh, on mindfulness at the beginning of August, and one thing that stood out to me. I mean, we had, you know, I think there was five of us there, and most of the other districts that were there had maybe one person and everybody was I don't want to put the word impressed in their mouth but at least caught off guard in a sense that that we had a group of people and that in each building or in buildings we had people called social emotional learning specialists and that the Midland Public School District was heading in a direction that met the requirements that are being set forth by the state of Michigan uh, in, in a way that uh, is, is going to have a greater impact than having one person in a district who kind of tries to oversee everything that's going on. Um, so, so I think just the commitment of Midland Public Schools with social emotional learning specialists, with the student su support specialists, and focusing not only on students uh, health and well-being including that mental health piece but but the staff and the adults in the building which is a huge part of of what SEL is and you know we're focused on the wellness not only of the staff but the students and one of the things that I've been doing at Midland Public Schools is or at Midland High uh, mm -hmm. is creating uh, kind of a place for that to take place. Uh, and we now have what is called the RWC or the Resource Wellness Center. And it is uh, an area in the building where there are offices for various people. The um, SSS is there, my office is there, uh, school psychologists, social workers. So there's, there's uh, some staff coaches uh, there and things, but um, it's also a place for staff to just come and have a place to work, to take a break. Uh, for students who maybe have been through kind of seeing their own counselor, maybe gone through administration, those kind of things. One of the other things at the secondary level that uh, SELs are tasked with is uh, restorative practices and restorative circles. So if a student uh, is suspended or has some type of a behavioral um, issue previously, then they come back and they work hand in hand together. So that would be more of a two tier, uh, tier two, tier three element of SEL. But kind of integrating those students back into the building and making sure that we're looking at where they were, where they've come, what the expectation is, those kind of things. So when we, we hear all these acronyms and everything else, you've got SEL, you've got restorative practices, you've got you know MTSS and, and all these other things that really all go together hand in hand. Yeah, so is it safe to say, like? SEL is a pretty broad term then, right? I mean, you're, you're helping a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Correct. Oh, that's awesome. So, well, thank you ladies for being here today. I really appreciate your time. 
I uh, hope everybody learned something you know, that is, that's listening at home. Um, is there a resource that people can go to to, to find out more um, and kind of explore on their own more about social emotional learning? I think the Castle site is a great place to start. Um, if you go to www.castle.org, there's a lot of information there for both teachers, parents, and students. Okay, and what about here in the district? Is there anybody that, well, what would be a good starting point if a parent is listening and they think that they might, their child might need a um, social emotional learning specialist, or maybe even a teacher is listening and thinks that they, there's somebody they need to reach out to. Um, well, what would be a good, a good starting point? Sure, I would say um, within the buildings, obviously at the elementary level, we have one social emotional learning specialist per building. Um, so in terms of caregivers, parents at home, I would encourage them to reach out to their classroom teacher, um, who would then in turn reach out to us. And it can be a, a team approach, is really what we're going for here, to support the student in the way that they need. Um, Information also can be found on bulletin boards. I know at the elementary level, um, they're updated regularly that provide things like questions. You can ask your children to have some of these conversations and what we're focusing on in school and how does it connect to our PYP, the IB program. Um, so there are a lot of resources out there. It's just reaching out and being willing to be vulnerable and reach out. Awesome, all right. Thanks again, ladies, for being here today. This is AJ Hoffman for MPS Connections. I'm signing off. We'll, we'll see you in two weeks. We hope you enjoyed this episode of MPS Connections. We release new content on the first and third Thursday of almost every month. Do you have an idea for a podcast or other content from the district? Send it to communications at midlandps.org. Thanks.